Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David. Yes, dear? Are you awake, darling? Yes, I'm awake. Oh, I think that's mean. What's mean? For me to be awake? You've been awake and pretending to be asleep. And I've been awake for hours and not moving so I wouldn't disturb you and now I've got a crick in my neck. But I was sound asleep till you called me. You couldn't have been. People never bounce awake like that, all full of good spirits. I do. Good morning, my little crick in the neck. Good morning, David. (laughs) Oh, I can't decide which I like better, waking up with you or going to sleep with you. What's the difference? You got them both. That's true. Miss Claudia, breakfast, breakfast, Miss Claudia. Oh, it's Minerva. I forgot it was Wednesday. Who's Minerva? What's Wednesday got to do with it? Oh, she comes for cleaning on Wednesdays. You remember Minerva. Oh, sure. I I thought her name was Minnie, though. Minerva, for short. Breakfast, Miss Claudia. Miss Claudia does not live here anymore. Excuse me. I meant to say Miss Norris. That's much better. Come in, Minerva. Morning, Miss Claudia. Morning, Mr. Dave. Glad to see you home again. Oh, it's good to be home, Minerva. Uh, Hand me my pipe over there, will you, Minerva? Yes, sir. It sure is a shock to see you in Miss Claudia's room so early in the morning, Mr. Norton. I can give you the name of a very reputable minister who says it's quite all right, Minerva. Perfectly proper and legal. <laughs> but still somewhat of a shock. I know what Minerva means. <laughs> Say, what is the idea of breakfast in bed, for heaven's sake? Your mama said to bring it. Is mama up? Oh, uh, put the tray on the table between the beds, Minerva. Move the lamp, David. Hey, wait a minute. Don't take my ashtray. Yes, I'm your mama's up. Mama's cute. Yesterday, she went out before we had breakfast, and today, we've got it free in our room. Looks like she doesn't want to eat with us. Mmm, bacon. Wonder what she'll do tomorrow. <laughs> we'll just have to find a place of her own, I guess, so she can relax the poor dear. I hope she gets one with a room in it for me. Oh, we'll be lucky if we have a room in it for ourselves, Minerva. I'm going to have you once a week for laundry and cleaning, same as Mama has you. Maybe we'll have you every single day, Minerva. We'll do yes. nothing of the kind. You'll do with my cooking and like it, Mr. Norton. I'll do with it, but uh, do I have to like it? You certainly do. It's part of the marriage ceremony for you to like it. Uh, see, I, David, take this woman, love, honor, death do us part. Say, I don't remember anything about cooking in it. <laughs> Reg Miss Claudia means the better. Worst part, Mr. Norton. Miss Claudia, did you say? I mean Miss Norton. Miss Claudia, Mama told me... My to Mama done sh- told me... What'd she tell you, Minerva? You need a knife when you spread your butter. Didn't I bring you a knife? i will get one straight off. And a spoon for my coffee while you're about it. Oh, come back. What'd Mama tell you, Minerva? To ask you what Mr. Daly would like for his dinner so she can order. Oh, that's easy. Steak, apple pie, and he doesn't care what else. With cheese. What kind of cheese? Just plain old ordinary everyday rat cheese. <laughs> yes, yeah, Wonderful, wonderful woman. Who? Minerva or me? Your mother. Oh. But do we always have to have breakfast in bed? Don't you like it? I have a feeling it's going to make me late for the office. No later than if we didn't. Didn't what? Have it in bed. But personally, I like to pop into a bath in the morning, brush my teeth, put on all my clothes, and, and eat my breakfast in an honest-to-goodness chair at an honest-to-goodness table. I wake up every morning of the world to find out something new and remarkable about you, Claudia. Today, I find I'm married to a frontier woman. Maybe I should have married a farmer. Or a fisherman. They get up early, too. Oh, no, 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 David. Never a fisherman. You sound so very sure of yourself. Is there a reason this time? Of course. A farmer can milk cows and things like that, but... What can you do with fish? 
That's the sort of question I find it hard to answer in the middle of my breakfast call. Well, if I still remember it after <laughs> breakfast, I'll ask you again and see what you say. First, let's finish breakfast and see what you remember. All right. Hey, by the way, this is wonderful coffee. Can you make good coffee? Very. How do you know? Do you ever make any? Sure. You ever give me dishwater, I'll wring your neck. Now, do you hear that? Mm-hmm. Your knife and teaspoon, Miss Claudia. And more wedding presents and a whole heap of less. Oh, business is good. Say, how long do wedding presents keep up anyway? Till the first baby. Isn't it wonderful? I'll open this one, David, and you open the big one. Hey, wait and see what they are, Minerva. Such a lot of wedding presents when you get married. Oh, that's one of the nicest things about getting married. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, for heaven's sakes, another bonbon dish. Mine is salt cellars. Don't people ever think a bride does anything but eat candy and salt? With an occasional candlestick thrown in. Here, Minerva, you can take my tray. But you hardly eat anything. You can't live on love. Oh, yes, you can. You'd be surprised what a lot of vitamins it has in it. I never heard of it. (laughs) That's funny, vitamins in love. (laughs) (laughs) To be taken every minute, every day, for years. Mrs. Brown, what would you say if I were to ask you for another piece of pie? I've already decided to raise your board, Mr. David, that's your third piece. (laughs) Will you let him alone, Claudia? He likes my pie. She's jealous because she didn't make it, Mother. How'd you guess? Come on, now, let's eat it in the living room. And drop crumbs all over the place. What for? Anyway, I might want another piece after the other piece. All right, I'll bring everything in here, then. Everything what? You'll see. Now what, Mother? Better do as she says, David. I might have known it. You can't depend on anyone these days, not even a mother-in-law. I take no sides. Now go on, both of you. I'll clear the table. No time for that. We'll do it later. I will not leave a table full of dishes. Close the door and we won't see them. Who do you think you're fooling? Nobody. Better do as she says, Mother. Come on. You've learned, David. I'm coming. What's the rush? You'll see. For once, I don't want to see. I want to be told. He's going to be difficult, Mama. Good for you, David. Stand up for your rights. It is not easy, Mother. I'm telling you. I know. Tell me, what do you do when you don't want to do what Claudia wants you to do? I do it. What was that again, David? Hush up. Your mother and I are planning a campaign for the survival of the fittest. Honestly, nobody pays any attention to me around here since I'm married. Yeah, my heart bleeds for you. He's getting very fresh, Mama. Come on, David, now eat your pie in the living room. Well, this is the crucial moment, Mother. What do I do? He's strong-minded. Don't budge. I won't. Come on, let's go. Henpecked. Now, you sit over there, Mom, in the big chair. May I have your permission to knit, Mrs. Norton? If you do it quietly. And don't drop any stitches. Thank you. Now, David, you sit there. I'm sitting there already. Oh, so you are. Would you mind telling me what this is all about? It's about wedding presents. Wedding presents? Yep, we've got to decide which we're going to keep and which we're going to return. Oh, return them all. David, dare we? No, you daren't. Have you no sentiment? None at all. Anyway, it's the simplest way out. I can't open my closet without boxes falling out all over me. I don't see what you're complaining about. I sleep with them, piled up all around me. <laughs> see, David, she's always finding fault and never complaining. Oh, hush up. What are you going to do with them? That's the point. It's simple. When we decide what to keep, we'll hide them away like squirrels till we find our own apartment. Uh, say, hand me my pipe from over there, would you, squirrel? Here. I'm glad you're the pipe type. What type is the pipe? Tight, precisely. (laughs) Oh, you know, like David. There you have it, Mother. (laughs) The perfect definition. Aren't you going to kiss me before we start? Oh, I'd just as soon not start. I'd just as soon not to. What time is it? Too early. Too early for what? To wash the dishes. Much too early for the dishes. So we'll do the presents instead. Now, what about this one? Should we return it or keep it? What is it? Can't you tell? Nope. Can you? Nope. Mama, what is it? Uh, well, uh, I think it must be for shrimp. Mm-hmm. What makes you think it must? Don't pin me down. Mama's right, it's for shrimp. I love shrimp. Me too. You do? Mm-hmm. Never told me. Keep the shrimp dish. How about clams? Oh, I'm crazy about clams. Have you got a clam dish? No, use a soup plate. What about crabs, David? Well, what about them? Do you like them? Uh, too much work. I prefer lobsters. I adore lobsters. How about snails? No. Who asked you, Mrs. Brown? Uh, Claudia and I are just getting acquainted, Mother. Well, do I put the shrimp dish to the right of me or to the left of me? Everything to the left of me will be to be returned. Shrimp dish to the right. It's put. Now, what about this? 
Return it or keep it? What is it? Soup tureen. Looks like a silver bathtub. <laughs> it does a little. What's the matter with Aunt Louisa? Nobody ever ate that much soup in their life. I don't even like soup. Oh, I do. I like soup. I like chowder. David, it's more practical to like soup. You'll just have to learn to. But this is too much soup. Still, it's a very handsome tureen. You can use it for plants. If you like it so much, Mama, we'll give it to you and you can use it for plants. I haven't got a plant. Then to the left of me. Claudia, wait a minute. No, no, it's too late. We are now about to discuss the fish knives that look like little fishes. It's from Aunt Louisa. Fish knives? They are not. They're from Uncle George. The tureen. Tureen. Well, well, just because Aunt Louisa likes no, soup, I see no reason. No, she likes tureen. She's been giving them for years. Wedding presents, anniversary presents. Well, what about births? Probably. Handy to wash the baby in. We have no baby, so we'll return it. Yes, let's. Comes from Packiers. That means it must have cost an awful lot of money. Well, now, let's see. How about the fish knives? You're running this, young lady. Well, they're quite nice, and we both like fish, don't we? You just went through that routine. I don't think I can take it again. Those are shellfish. Hey, what's your hurry? Where are you going? The dishes. Honestly, I think we're more interesting than dirty dishes, don't you, David? Oh, lots, lots. Mama, will you come with me tomorrow to return the tureen? I will not. What's in all those other boxes? I can tell you blindfolded butter plates, ashtrays. Bonbon dishes, salt, salad. And don't forget the napkin ring with your names on them. <laughs> Serves you right. You have to keep them. Well, at least they don't have he and she engraved on them. That's towels. Oh, towels, napkin rings, same thing. What's the difference? Look, let's keep everything but the soup tureen. Everything? I think so. When did you decide that, Claudia? Just now. I'm sleepy. So am I. Come on. We'll help with the dishes first. You don't have to. I'll help. I can get them done faster without you. But at least have the decency to take all that stuff off the sofa so I can go to bed. I'll put them under the sofa. Don't forget, Mother. She said she was a squirrel. David! What? Do you like squirrels? I love squirrels. We are silly, aren't we? Very. Oh, it's so nice to be silly with people you love. I'll tell you a secret. What? You can't be silly. If you're not in love. (laughs) (laughs) All story material used in this broadcast of Claudia was under the supervision of Rose Franken and William Brown Maloney. these changing times, here's one thing that hasn't changed. Through two world wars, through two periods of rising prices, the quality of Coca-Cola has remained unchanged. And the price is still five cents. There's more Coke now so that you can enjoy the pause that refreshes with ice-cold Coca-Cola more often. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause... The pause that refreshes. <laughs>